Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. Wanted to have a conversation with you guys. Um, recalling a online conversation that I had uh, several months back. And uh, the topic of that conversation was, is, can you be a prepper if you don't have some type of homestead? And uh, the majority opinion was, is you have to have some type of a homestead or you have to have to have to have some type of a uh, you know farm to you know, grow your own food and take care of yourself if something bad happens and uh, I was a little bit of a devil's advocate in that conversation and I said um, I knew a lot of places like that growing up I knew a lot of places that what you would call today an absolute prepper's paradise they had orchards and they had uh huge gardens and they canned their own stuff and they had a smokehouse and they had livestock and uh they were as self-sufficient as i've ever seen any human beings be not one of those places exist anymore because one thing took all of them out and not one exists around me today and i live in a fairly rural area like what it was when i was a kid growing up and now people are starting to move back in here. They're trying to, you know, fire that stuff back up because it's kind of the popular thing to do. And it's not quite working like what it did because that knowledge and that lifetime's worth of experience is gone. And that thing, that one thing that took all these uh, farms and places out was the people got too old to look after them. They got too old to maintain those farms and maintain those homesteads. And one spouse got sick. The other spouse you know, couldn't handle it anymore. Um, the children weren't interested. They got into other endeavors. They grew up. They moved away. And slowly but surely, all those places declined, got broken up, got sold. Woodlots got cut down it's not the same anymore and um, well a homestead is nice like i said this is a bit of a devil's advocate i guess in uh in this conversation but um well a homestead is nice it's good while you can take care of it now i know there's some people that'll say oh well that's why you got to have a mag and a group or whatever it's never going to be friends and acquaintances are never going to be quite what blood is when you're maintaining a centennial farm, let's say, a farm that's been in the family for 100 years, they're dwindling. There's less and less of them every year because they're getting bought and the people get older. I, I know when I, even as recently as 10, 12 years ago, there were still some 80 acre um, farms that older people had, you know, they had rented the land out, but the farms were still serviceable. They still had barns. They still had, you know, the infrastructure where they could have been brought back quickly. All of them are gone. They got bulldozed and they got plowed under all them smaller, more easily maintainable places. They're all gone. And, uh, the slow march of time is going to get us all. So I'm at a point where maybe having smaller, easier to maintain place they, where you can grow a little bit of a garden, maybe have a few chickens and uh, live a smaller life. Remember, a smaller house is easier to heat up here in the north and a larger house is bigger houses require you know more infrastructure to keep them going and that would even be more so in some type of collapse where you really had to you know harden and buckle down and uh, these are the things um, that I've been considering more and more since my health issues in the last year that may be a large you know homestead what seems to be the pre prevalent prepping wisdom that might not be that might not be the way for everybody in fact there's preppers that i know that move around and they don't just move around inside the united states they move around the world they go from country to country stay there for a while and then move on to another place and then this requires 
a different set of what you would call preps. It would require some type of, you know, portable financial instrument so you can maintain that, you know, on the go type thing. It's not always about a big stockpile somewhere that gets you through these situations because if something bad happens in your geographical area, you can't sell your place to gain those financial resources back to move to another place. And I'm thinking of, uh, you know, Eastern Europe right now. You know, who who's going to buy a place in a war zone? Nobody. So then whatever money that you had wrapped up in that asset that's in that war zone, you can't get that money back out of it. And you may have to relocate just because that's the safe thing to do. And you don't have those finances anymore to reestablish yourself some other place. So the conventional prepping wisdom of, you know, you have to have a large homestead or a large farmstead to, you know, sustain yourself if something bad happens. Well, it can work in some situations it's not going to work in every situation and that uh, flexibility and that ability to um, adapt to different things, adapt to different situations is going to become more and more important. And we will all eventually succumb to the ravages of time, just like the old timers did around here with their homes and their farmsteads. Like I said, not a one of them exists anymore. And, uh, that's basically because of the ravages of time. They just couldn't maintain them anymore. And uh, when those places got sold and broke up, they'll never be the same what they were back when I was uh, growing up. It would take a lifetime to put all that stuff back together under the right circumstances. So, while self-sufficiency is important, um, I feel it's becoming more and more difficult in a... Uh, this day and age to maintain something like that just because of many many factors but anyway this is modern refugee appreciate all my subscribers out there hope you guys uh get a little information a little entertainment and something to think about as always out of my videos and you guys have a good one